Okay, good evening or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jim Ostrowski and I work in Eagles Environmental Support Division. I welcome you to our public hearing this afternoon on the Average Line 5 application uh, for proposed tunnel construction involving potential wetland impacts. So uh, glad you could all be here today with us. Uh, we've got about, it's like about 30, 39 people logged in at this point. I think probably we'll have several more continue to log in. I just wanna go over a few housekeeping guidelines before we get started. Uh, first of all, all of your lines are muted at this point. Um, we also are recording the webinar. So I'll explain a little bit later on about how we're gonna unmute your lines to make your comments. But for now on, well, for now you are all muted. Uh, before we go into details, uh, what I'd like to do is bring up our Eagle staff that are with us for the hearing list that'll be listening to your comments. So if you all wanna go ahead and turn your cameras on, have you introduce yourselves. And we can uh, start with Joe. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Joseph Haas. I'm the district supervisor with Environment, Great Lakes and Energy um, Water Resources Division for Cadillac and Gaylord field offices. Um, my responsibilities include uh, administration of environmental regulatory programs including compliance and enforcement of uh, wetlands, inland lakes and streams, floodplains, Great Lakes and coastal resources uh, under applicable parts of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, 1994, Public Act 451, as amended, that's NREPA. Um, thank you. Thanks, Joe. And I actually was, I meant to give uh, Teresa a few minutes up front to, to say hi to everybody. So Teresa, I'll let you introduce yourself and uh, say what you want to say for intro. Sorry about that. That's, that's okay, Jim. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I am Teresa Seidel, the Water Resources Division Director here at Eagle. And I want to just give you a little bit of overview of what happens during a public hearing, because I think sometimes they come off pretty impersonal, and they're not intended to be at all. But What's going to happen is, uh, and Jim will give more of this detail when he goes over the, the rules for how a hearing works, but I just want you to know we will not be responding to comments or questions today. We are just here to listen and take notes on what your comments are and to have you get them into the public record as it relates to this particular application. So please understand that we're, we're not trying to be rude or, or standoffish. We're just here to hear your comments today. We did do four public meetings previously over the last month. Uh, to, to, that we did interact with you and give you an opportunity to get your questions answered, but that's not what today will be. So I just want to be clear on that so that you're, you don't think we're just trying to ignore you. We just are trying to get all your comments written down um, and this will be recorded. So you'll be able to look back and understand what comments were submitted if you're just listening in on the, on the hearing today. But just thank you for joining us. I appreciate the fact that you took the time out of your day to give us comments on these important permits. And I just look forward to, to hearing what your comments are. And thank you. Great, great. Thanks, Teresa. Uh, Luis? Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, Luis Saldivia. I am uh, one of the field um, operations section managers. I um, happen to have the Lakes uh, Michigan and Superiors. Um, responsibilities. So I work uh, with uh, district offices, and in particular in this case with the Gaylord District, where is where the project is uh, being uh, uh, located and processed. So um, be here for the rest of the afternoon, uh, listening to the comments that are uh, put forth. Thank you. All right, thanks. And Anne? Hi, I'm Ann Garwood. I'm supervisor of the Wetlands, Lakes, and Streams Unit in Water Resources Division out of Lansing. Uh, we provide technical support to district offices on um, complicated project reviews, as well as things like coordination with SHPO and other agencies on rare and imperiled species and that kind of thing. All right, and James? Good afternoon, Cliff. I am a deputy director with Eagle and look forward to your comments today. Thank you. All right, thanks. And uh, Les, you there? Yes, I am. I'm here. Um, my name is Les Smith. I'm with Eagles Environmental Support Division, and I am um, standing in as co-host with Jim today. All right, thanks, Les. So yeah, you'll be hearing Les as we go through the names and calling them off. All right, folks. Well, um, 
what I'm going to do now is uh, as part of public hearing, we usually have a, a hearing statement that we read. So I'll be reading that off and it's bear with us. It's kind of long, but it does lay out everything that's uh, happening today and why we're here. So, so you want to listen in. I am reading it off. So uh, just bear with me. Um, so we'll do that. And then I'm going to come back after reading the hearing statement and give you a more um, in informal discussion about how things are going to run. Then we'll kick it off. Okay. So, uh, Kicking it off with the public hearing statement. Uh, this hearing is the first of two public hearings to take comment on the Enbridge Energy Joint Permit Application or Resource Wetlands Application for a proposed tunnel under the state's Straits of Mackinac. The second public hearing on this application will be held on October 8th, beginning at 6, 6 p.m. The department previously held two public informational meetings on this application that included presentations on the proposed tunnel construction project and resource permit review of the project under authority of Part 303, Wetlands Protection, and Part 325, Great Lakes Submerged Lands of the Natural Resource and Environmental Protection Act 1994, Public Act 451 as amended NARIPA. Recordings of these public meetings are available to be viewed on the michigan.gov slash line five website. Enbridge proposes to construct a 21 foot diameter tunnel, approximately 3.6 miles long, connecting Magalpin Point in the lower peninsula to Point LaBarbe in the upper peninsula, underneath the lake bed of the Straits of Mackinac. The project's purpose is to replace the existing Line 5 dual pipelines crossing the Straits of Mackinac with a new 30-inch diameter pipeline within the tunnel for light crude oil and natural gas liquids. The tunnel will be constructed using a tunnel boring machine, or TBM. Precast concrete segmental, segmental lining will be installed on the tunnel, it, it, it will be installed as the tunnel is constructed, and the annual annular space outside the tunnel's concrete lining would be filled with low permeability grout. A launch portal would be constructed in uplands at the Magalpin Point, southern work area as the entry point for the tunnel boring machine with an exit point in the Point LaBarbe northern work area. Approximately, approximately 194 cubic yards of clean aggregate fill would be discharged into a wetland area approximately 113 feet long, 16 feet wide, and 3.7 feet deep, or 0 0.03 acres, to provide access around the existing North Straits facility to a construction and staging area to the north of the facility. The existing road, Boulevard Drive to the east will be widened to 20 feet in top width and up to 38 feet in base width, which would involve approximately 222 cubic yards of fill placed in seven wetland areas, totaling 3,468 square feet, or 0 0.08 acres. Two outfall structures for treated, for treated water would be constructed in wetlands involving a 0 0.02 acre of wetland fill. Total proposed wetland fill at Point LaBarbe is 0 0.13 acres. Two water intake structures are proposed to be placed on the Great Lakes bottom lands, each with a base of approximately 10 feet by 10 feet. They would be installed on each side of the straits located approximately 280 feet offshore the northern work area in approximately 10 feet of water depth and located approximately 350 feet offshore the southern work area in 17 feet of water depth with a six to 12 inch diameter pipe connected to onshore water storage tanks. Each intake structure would be marked with a surface buoy and would be removed upon the completion of the tunnel construction. A discharge pipe of Great Lakes bottomlands would also be connected to the southern intake, which would be used intermittently to discharge treated wastewater, or excuse me, would be used to discharge treated water. C compensatory mitigation. In place of the wetland mitigation, treatment removal of an, of an area of invasive Phragmites is proposed and a barrier plan has been proposed to address unauthorized vehicles impacts along em Embridge Point Labarb property. The proposal may affect Northern Long-Eared Bat, Houghton's Goldenrod and Dwarf Lake Iris on their critical habitat. A plant mitigation plan to address anticipated impacts of the two state threatened plant species has been provided by Enbridge. Site clearing and grading is proposed to be completed during the winter months, meaning October 30th to March 15th, 
to minimize effects to environmental features such as nesting birds and roosting bats. Endangered species, endangered species coordination for Holton's goldenrod and dwarf lake iris is, going, is ongoing with Michigan Department of Natural Resources, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. All right, so how the comment process will work today. For those, for those of you who pre-registered to attend today's hearing and indicated you would like to make a comment, we will call your name and unmute your microphone so you can make your comment. We will call your name in the order in which you registered. Once we have called the names of everyone who indicated they want, wanted to make a comment during the registration, we'll open it up to comment from other attendees. At that time, if you have not made a comment and wish to do so, please click the raise hand icon to indicate you wish to make a comment. If calling in by phone only, please hit star nine on your phone to raise your hand. We will call on those who have their hand raised to make a comment in the general order in which their hand was raised. Each person will have three minutes to make their comment. I will indicate when you have one minute left and when your time has expired. If I indicate your time has expired, please wrap, please wrap up your comments immediately so that we can allow the next person to make their comment. Please be sure to state your name and any organization you represent prior to starting your comment. Please note that we will not be responding to your comments or answering questions during the hearing. We will be simply listening to your comments for the record. If you would like to make a comment but do not wish to make a verbal comment today, you are, wel you are welcome to submit written comments. Written comments may be submitted in our MyWaters database and a link is being provided to you in the chat function of Zoom. You'll see that pop up in a little bit. Our comments can also be submitted to the following address. Water Resources Division at Eagle, 2100 West M32, Gaylord, Michigan, 497359282, excuse me, I'll read that zip again, 49735-9282, or by email, the email address is eagle-enbridge-comments at michigan.gov. This hearing is being recorded and your comments will be part of the information that EGLE will consider in the review of this application for the proposed permit under authority of Part 303 Wetlands Protection and Part 325 Great Lakes Submerged Lands of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act 1994, Public Act 451 as amended. Comments received will not be responded to at this time, but will be included in response to public comment documents and be part of the permit record. All comments and information received will be available in MyWaters online on the online database. The comment period is open until October 19th, 2020. Okay, everyone. So uh, what you see on the screen is basically what I just read and other ways to submit official comment in case you don't want to submit a comment today uh, verbally. So you have that, I'll bring that up late, later on again. Um, and just to remind everybody what's going to happen is that uh, we'll go through the list of people when you registered. I've got a list in front of me right here that people that said they wanted to make a comment and I'll start with the person that first registered and write my way down. And uh, after we do that, uh, we will move then to people that didn't make a comment yet and still want to and you'll just raise your hand. Um, I'll remind you about that when that point comes. Uh, just remember you all have three minutes to make your comment and I'll break in and I'll probably give you a one minute sign too uh, when you have one minute left and then I'll let you know when your three minutes is up. All right, so with that, I'm going to, I guess, bring our staff back up here to listen in. And uh, I'm going to start reading off the names. And I'll just tell you that um, not everyone who registered is usually in attendance. So people may have registered and are just not attending. So we might call off some names that people might not be here, meaning they just aren't in attendance. So, um, and remember, when I call off your name, I'm going to call off your name as well as the person that is on deck. So the next person up so you can be ready. Um, I'm going to unmute your mic, or I guess Les will unmute your mic until you'll see something pop up on your screen that'll tell you that your mic is, in, is being unmuted, or do you want to unmute your mic? So click yes, of course. Um, or you might have a little microphone icon that you're going to want to unmute. So just be aware of that. 
and make sure you repeat your name and any organization you're with. All right, so Les, I'm gonna start uh, reading off the names. Um, the first name I have, I have on my list is Jennifer McKay, and the second name is Mike Wolzinski. So is Jennifer McKay in attendance? Yes, she is. Jennifer, you can unmute your mic and go ahead, I'll start the clock. You there, Jennifer? I've unmuted her on our, on our end. Yep, Jennifer, you should be unmuted on your end. You should see something pop up on your screen. Are you in your toolbar? You might have a little button that says unmute. Oh, I just got a note from Jennifer McKay saying she will not be speaking today. And okay. we'll speak in the next meeting. Okay, thank you for letting us know. All right, so uh, Mike Wolchinski is next and then Mary Riley is after Michael. So do you uh, see Michael? Would you, no, it's W-I-L-C. I, I do not have Michael. Okay, do we have Mary Riley in attendance? I do not have Mary Riley. Okay. Uh, working my way down the list, uh, is there a Sean Hammond in attendance? Yes. Okay. So Sean, you should be able to unmute yourself. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can go ahead and uh, remember to repeat your name and any organization you're with, and you can go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sean Hammond. I'm the policy director with Michigan Environmental Council. Uh, I want to thank uh, Eagle for holding these public hearings and holding multiple hearings on this very important uh, topic uh, of the line five permits. So today I know we're talking about the resource permits and I will be brief um, as I know there will be other groups submit, uh, submitting uh, more in-depth technical comments uh, as will we um, in, in written form. But I do wanna flag uh, three major issues that we, we see at Michigan Environmental Council with uh, moving forward with these, these permits. We do oppose moving forward with these permits at this time. Um, first is sufficiency of information. Um, so as was documented uh, earlier this week um, in various media sources, uh, we believe that the, the geotechnical information provided is insufficient for a permit decision. Um, we do not believe that there should have been an administrative completeness designation uh, and that we should be uh, Eagle and uh, Eagle should be looking for more information on, on these issues uh, before making a permit decision. Uh, the second is a, under sufficiency, is the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. Uh, the current uh, proposal before, before us has uh, a construction permit under the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. We believe that this also requires an easement transmission under the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. Uh, other groups, uh, such as uh, Flow for Love of Water, have a more detailed information that they have shared on this issue, um, but we do agree uh, that the, the, current, the current lease held by Enbridge is insufficient for the public trust uh, findings required under Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. And before any construction can begin, we believe that an easement does need to be issued under the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act for this project on the bottom lands. So that's on sufficiency. Second is the wetlands uh, permit. So the wetlands uh, permit Eagle or Enbridge uh, contends that this is a very small uh, wetland portion and therefore should be uh, removed from mitigation and other, other issues. Whereas in fact, this is actually a benchmark uh, wetland and is uh, a major important uh, wetland in the area, a Great Lakes coastal wetland. And again, more, I will provide more uh, specific comments on this uh, at a later time. But this, this requires a, a more full review, uh, given that this high, high quality wetland is impacted by this project, uh, including an alternatives analysis, uh, where a finding of no alternative could be, uh, could be done, uh, and this project uh, needs to be considered in its full for that. Uh, finally, we believe that a full environmental impact statement needs to be done, and as part of this can be the alternatives analysis. Uh, we need to move forward in a holistic way here. Uh, again, right now, there's just simply not enough information on the record uh, in order to make these crucial permitting decisions that will affect the great future of the Great Lakes um, for at least 99 years of the pipeline, but likely forever Three given minutes. the impacts. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. All right, let's uh, go to the next person, uh, Ann Wywoody. And then after Ann Wywoody is Pat Peak. So Jim, last... I don't, Jim, I don't have Ann Wywoody um, listed as an attendee uh, pres at present. Okay. Do we have Patty Peak? Yes. Okay. Patty Peak, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. All right. My name is Patty Peak, and I'm a full time resident of St. Ignace. My home is the closest one on the tunnel side. I serve as chair of the citizens group, the Straits of Mackinac Alliance. Many of our members are property owners living on or near the Straits and like me will be directly impacted by all the decisions that you will make. We strongly urge you to deny these permits. The proposed site of the build on the north side of the Straits is on Boulevard Drive. It has historical significance, but moreover, it is a place of spectacular beauty. The boulevard is primarily an unpaved road that meanders along two miles of the northern coastline of Lake Michigan. It provides a rare opportunity for locals and our many visitors to interact intimately with this incredible natural resource. People drive, walk, bicycle along the road to view the abundant bird life, wildflowers, and unobstructed views of the lake shore and the Mackinac Bridge. The wetlands surrounding the boulevard are teeming with activity. Kayakers are drawn to the area since it is a scenic spot to paddle in the shadow, shadow of the mighty Mac. The proposed tunnel build, including extensive excavation of the boulevard area and years of actual construction will significantly impact the local area and most definitely affect the quality of life of residents and visitors. Today, I present a few areas of my concerns. I will also submit written comments with pictures. The geology of the north property is such that blasting will be required to create a tunnel exit that is 70 feet in diameter and 150 feet deep. How can Eagle assure us that the drilling and blasting will not disrupt the aquifer, contaminate our groundwater, and impact our well waters? Although Enbridge says that the noise will not be significant, they have failed to take into account the way in which sound is carried across water. The tunnel blast area is only a quarter of a mile from my home. There will also be significant destruction of the wetlands. The high lake water levels have caused saturation of much of the project area. The area of wetland loss is purported to be only 0.13 acres. However, there will be a minimum of 1.2 miles or some 6,300 plus feet of excavation along Boulevard Drive as it's widened to 20 feet paved and elevated three feet to accommodate heavy machinery. All of this work will be done through, wet, through the wetland or the shoreline. How will this affect the health of the lake? Finally, if built, the tunnel will carry propane part of the time. The explosive risk has been totally ignored by Enbridge, but those of us nearby are very aware that our neighbor will be the world's largest pipe bomb. In the short term, this project will cause 24 seven disruption for years along this unique and very popular serene area. In the long term, it will destroy vital wetlands and diminish the quality of life for all those living and visiting here. Please place protection of the Great Lakes ahead of an ill-conceived plan by a private company. I urge you to deny the permit. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Okay, uh, is there a Sean McBreedy? And after Sean McBreedy, Mike Alimo. Uh, Sean McBreedy, you're unmuted, go ahead. Hi, Jim, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent, thank you. Um, hello, my name is Sean McBreedy, and I'm the Michigan Legislative and Policy Director for Clean Water Action and the Campaign Coordinator for Oil and Water Don't Mix. I'm here today to oppose the issuing of this permit based on several factors, giving de detail on a couple of them. Uh, first, Enbridge has not done the research that's required to build this project. As experts have noted, Enbridge drilled boreholes roughly every 953 through, feet through the straits, while the industry standard is 50 to 200 feet, depending on the anticipated challenges of the geology. The geology in the Straits of Mackinac is notoriously complex, and this lack of research could very easily lead to catastrophic results should the project move forward. The few boring samples that Enbridge did take revealed the presence of methane, which is concerning, especially considering the overall lack of research. 
Should the tunnel boring machine encounter methane pockets, the tunnel could explode during construction, causing not only a bentonite release into the lake and an oil spill from the west leg of line five above, but also putting the lives of any workers in the tunnel in jeopardy. Further, the design of the tunnel has changed substantially, rendering previous risk assessments useless. The V-shaped tunnel design will save Unbridge money, however, it will make the ancient riverbed in the middle of the straits the most inaccessible part of the tunnel. Groundwater infiltration flooding the tunnel would be difficult to remove, and during construction, groundwater infiltration in the middle could cut workers off from the only exit. I am also troubled by the lack of an environmental impact statement on this project. For a project of this magnitude, an EIS is essential. Eagle staff has noted that they intend to rely on an EIS completed for the Michigan Public Service Commission, but it is still not clear that the MPSC EIS would be completed in Eagle's statutory timeframe. There seems to be quite a bit of confusion about which state entities are responsible for regulating this project. Enbridge is currently arguing that NPSC has no authority to consider tunnel design, and yesterday in oral argument, they said that Eagle was charged with reviewing tunnel design issues. This agency has not made it clear, Eagle that is, that they will be considering impacts of tunnel design, and in fact, it would be difficult to fully consider design impacts without an EIS and without consulting with tunnel expertise that is not currently available in the Eagle department. Eagle staff has indicated that they will be consulting with a tunneling expert retained by MDOT. However, such a person would have a clear conflict of interest due to the fact that in overseeing this project moving forward, they would stand to financially benefit from the permits being approved. Enbridge is playing a shell game with state regulatory agencies and hoping that no one will thoroughly review this project. Bottom line is that Enbridge hasn't done the requisite research to move forward with this project and approving this permit would be setting the stage for a major catastrophe in the most sensitive part of the Great Lakes ecosystem. I strongly urge you to fulfill Eagle, Eagle's mission to protect our Great Lakes and environment by rejecting this permit application. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next person is Michael Imo. And after that, we Mary Myers. So Michael Imo, looks like you are, can I meet yourself, so go ahead. Uh, Mike Alimo, we have unmuted you, so you can um, go ahead and try to unmute yourself. If not, I can come back to you. It's no problem. Less, um, we're going to come back and see if we can get uh, Mike back on again. Uh, in the meantime, is Mary Myers available? She's the next one up. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Hi, um, my name is Mary Myers. I'm with the Lake Superior Community Partnership. We are a, a private public partnership in Marquette County, Michigan, whose mission is focused on the promotion and advancement of economic and community development. We are an accredited economic development organization through the International Economic Development Council and serve as Marquette County's leading resource for economic development. The LSCP is committed to facilitating job creation, retaining existing business, assisting with business growth, and attracting new businesses to our region. Our partner businesses, 400 Strong, are committed to this mission through the investment of time and resources. We urge you to approve the resource permit application as the utility corridor is the most practical long-term solution to deliver a secure energy supply to residents and businesses of the Upper Peninsula. The following points further solidify our point as line five continues to be a critical source of 540,000 barrels per day of propane and crude oil supply for Michigan and surrounding areas that make up the regional supply network for the state, producing transportation fuels and consumer goods ranging from computers of clothing and cell phones serves approximately 65% of the propane used in the Upper Peninsula and Northern Michigan for which no viable alternative exists. Supplies Michigan and regional refineries that provide Michigan with various fuels that Michigan residents rely on in their day-to-day -day lives. For example, these refineries served by Line 5 supply a large percentage of the aviation fuels at the Detroit's airport, an important contributor, contributor to the state's economy. 
I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that Enbridge pays approximately 2.7 million in taxes in the Upper Peninsula and over 60 million statewide, supporting the many services provided to us by our local municipalities. The proposed concrete wall tunnel is to be placed approximately 100 feet below the lake bed, reducing the risk of a spill in the straits to zero, and Enbridge has committed to pay for the construction and operation of the tunnel, allowing for the project to move quickly. The environmental impact of the tunnel construction have been greatly minimized and construction and operation will not disturb the lake bottom or affect any aquatic wildlife and sediment. Also water use for construction is minimal and an amount about equal to two Olympic size swimming pools each day and treated to safely recycle and return to the waters of the streets where it came from. Because of this, we would like to, you to support the Great Lakes Tunnel Permit application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, we're gonna to try to go back to Michael Limo. We called his name earlier. Uh, last his hand is raised, so he's probably at the top. So, uh, Mike, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we got you. Thank you, and sorry about that. My name is Michael Limo. I'm the Director of Energy and Environmental Affairs for the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. Um, I want to speak today uh, in support of the Great Lakes Tunnel Project. Uh, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce is Michigan's leading statewide business advocacy organization and on the job every day standing up for job providers. The Chamber is the unified voice of over 5,000 member employers, trade associations, and local chambers of commerce of every size and type in all 83 counties of the state. The Great Lakes Tunnel is without question the most practical long-term solution for delivering a secure energy supply to the region while enhancing environmental safeguards in the Straits of Mackinac. We're also pleased that the $500 million project is being funded entirely by Enbridge without a dime of taxpayer dollars. The tunnel will replace a portion of line five, the twin pipelines that cross beneath the straits along the bottom of the lake bed. It truly delivers the fuel that keeps homes warm and Michigan's economy moving. According to independent studies, the tunnel will make the risk of an oil spill from line five in the straits virtually zero. The project will create hundreds of jobs and skilled trades and protect thousands more in industries across Michigan. In fact, the tunnel project will supply the fuel that supports more than 47,000 direct and indirect jobs in our state, hundreds of millions of dollars in capital investment, tens of millions of dollars in tax revenue our communities rely on, and more. Michigan's tourism industry is a key part of the state's economy, and the Michigan Chamber of Commerce is proud to represent hundreds of employers and their employees who rely on tourism, as well as the health and beauty of the Great Lakes to make their living. Environmental impacts of tunnel construction have been greatly minimized and construction and operation will not disturb the lake bottom or affect any aquatic wildlife and sediment. All water necessary to support the construction and operation of the tunnel will be treated and monitored prior to site discharge. There will be water withdrawals and treated wastewater discharge as part of the project, but it won't be continuous and all wastewater will be treated in accordance with all applicable state standards and guidelines. Placing the tunnel deep under the lake bed provides multiple layers of protections, safeguarding the Straits area from the risk of an oil spill, protecting our Great Lakes ecosystem, and mitigating wetland impacts. In one minute. The application makes clear that Enbridge has reduced wetland impacts more than 20, from, from more than 20 acres down to one-tenth of an acre. Each of these steps is important for chamber members who count on the lakes and tourism for both their lifestyle and their livelihoods. The tunnel also represents the safest, most affordable way to transport fuel. Numerous studies have, have shown that uh, delivery alternatives, including those commissioned by the state of Michigan, have found no better way than Line 5 to provide the energy needed in the Upper Peninsula and across the state. And for that reason, we support the tunnel project at this time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, next person up uh, is Mark Griffin. And after Mark Griffin is Lois Ellis. Um, Mark is not present. Mark Griffin's not present. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lois Ellis, go ahead. You're unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. I'm Lois Ellis, Executive Director of the Dickinson Area Economic Development Alliance. Uh, the Alliance is an economic development organization that is more than 80% uh, funded by the private sector. We promote talent retention and attraction, business development, infrastructure improvement, and increased growth for the Dickinson County, Michigan area. Well, the Great Lakes Tunnel Project is located nearly 200 miles east of us in Mackinac County. The Alliance does believe there are, will be shared benefits throughout the entire region. 
We expect the state's regulatory bodies to conduct a thorough review of the resource permit application. We also believe that Enbridge will fully comply with regulations while working successfully with the appropriate regulatory agencies to implement an environmentally responsible project. Provided the required standards to operate safely and in compliance with applicable laws and rules are met, we urge approval of the permit application. The Alliance believes that thoughtful development that protects the environment is not only achievable, but also desirable by those of us who choose to live and work in the Upper Peninsula. Having access to safe and reliable sources of propane gas in particular is essential for our citizens and businesses that use this fuel source to heat their homes and businesses. We look forward to seeing the Great Lakes Tunnel Project reach a successful outcome and to the associated benefits that will add to the economic stability of our communities. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, next person is uh, Whitney Gravel. Uh, do not have Whitney. Okay, no Whitney Gravel in attendance. Um, Aubrey Macau Deluc, Del Deluc. Okay, Aubrey, you're unmuted. Are you going to mute yourself? And go ahead. You can go ahead. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, good afternoon. My name is Aubrey Mako LaDuke. Uh, I'm from Bay Mills Indian Community, where I'm the environmental specialist. Uh, Bay Mills Indian Community is a signatory of the 1836 Treaty of Washington, which has ceded territory to the United States for the creation of the state of Michigan. In that treaty, Bay Mills reserved the right to hunt, fish, and gather throughout that ceded territory, including the Great Lakes and the Straits of Mackinac. Uh, the United States Constitution, which states that all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land. Currently, Eagle lacks sufficient detail regarding Enbridge's tunnel design and lacks sufficient information on how to mitigate the harmful impacts that res will result from this construction project. Eagle and Enbridge have still not answered the pressing questions from tribal nations on how water quality will not be impacted in such ways that destroys the fisheries of the Great Lakes. In addition, Enbridge's application is lacking a wetlands mitigation plan, lacking an adequate threatened and endangered species mitigation plan, lacking an accurate culture and archeological survey of the Straits of Mackinac, and lacking any structural feasibility assessments on the tunnel that has been independently verified. As a sovereign government with the responsibility of managing and protecting the Great Lakes, Bay Mills opposes the placement of Line 5 tunnel beneath the Straits of Mackinac because it lengthens the life of a corroded, dented, and aging pipeline that is an immediate threat to the vast ecosystem of the Great Lakes, not just the five-mile portion crossing the Straits. And this is a threat to the treaty protected rights of the tribe, a threat to the cultural resource that is the Straits of Mackinac, and provides a limited value to our state's families and businesses. Our people, the Anishinaabe, have a teaching that says the decisions that we make today should result in a sustainable world seven generations into the future. <clears throat> it reminds us to understand the decisions we make are not limited to the immediate concerns of today, uh, but instead have implications long after we are gone. We well, urge Eagle to adopt these teachings as well and evaluate the risks and harms that Line 5 poses to the 645 miles of pipeline that run through the state of Michigan and evaluate that what that decision will really mean for the future of everyone. I speak for the 99% of miles that will remain at grave risk from this pipeline. Given the risks and harms to species, economy, wetlands, water quality, structural resources, uh, cultural resources, and tribal treaty rights, it is a pipeline that should be decommissioned as quickly as possible. Make watch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next commenter I've got is Ray Anderson. Then after Ray Anderson is uh, Mary Ralu. 
Jim, I don't have uh, Ray Anderson listed as an attendee okay. uh, by name, um, at least presently, but I do have Mary. Okay, so uh, Mary, uh, you are on to go ahead. Thank you, good afternoon. My name is Mary Rouleau and I live in Gross Point Park. I'm the chair of a local environmental task force covering the Gross Points. I'm opposed to this permit for many reasons, including that the Straits of Mackinac has incredibly complex geological formations and Enbridge has not done enough research to safely drill through the Straits. Tunneling under open water and not knowing exactly what conditions would be encountered caused a tunnel explosion in Michigan in 1971, killing 22 workers. A leak of natural gas liquids could trigger a massive explosion and risk the lives of workers and first responders, as well as causing massive spill and tunnel collapse. Nothing detailed in the permit application would remediate this risk. This permit raises more questions than it answers. The questions that I and others are raising must be answered fully. Respectfully, the purpose of EGLE is to protect our Great Lakes, the environment, and the public, not to process permits with insufficient regard for potential impact. This is especially true for an applicant like Enbridge that has simply shown it cannot be trusted. It, it kind of feels like the scenario with Lucy teeing up the football again for Charlie Brown. There was a lot of attention and rightly so on the recent dam failures in Midland that focused on the role of a private entity and lack of oversight. If this project goes wrong, it will be much, much worse. This permit needs much more scrutiny, including an environmental impact statement and a feasible and prudent alternatives analysis before EGLE even considers making a decision. Again, I ask you to deny the permit and thank you for hearing me. Okay, thank you. Okay, we got a couple more people on my list here to call off before we go to the audience, the rest of you. Um, just wanna remind you that uh, Les, Les did in the chat button, uh, send out a couple of posts about some links that you can use to directly submit written comments if you want to submit a written comment uh, for both the email address, the website for My Waters, and the mailing address. Okay, Les, uh, the next person I have in my list to comment here is Laura Ruddy, or Rudy, and then after that uh, it's Brian uh, Weselek. Uh, Jim, I don't have Laura, but I do have Brian. Okay, so uh, Brian, you can unmute yourself and uh, go ahead. Yeah, this is Brian Westlock with Bay Mills Indian Community. Uh, Aubrey previously made our statement, so I'll give back my time. Okay, thank you. Okay, that ends the list of people that I have um, on the people that who pre-registered and indicated that they wanted to make a comment. So, um, Oh, there we go. All right. I'm just going to share my screen again here. Just, just a moment. There we go. It's going to be locked up. Okay. So um, if you'd like to make a comment, you can uh, still, if you haven't made a comment already, uh, all I need you to do is if you want, you just click the raise hand icon and I will call off your name. If you're on the phone and I don't know if we still have a couple people on the phone or not. I think we did. Yep. We, we have, still have a few people on the phone. Yeah, okay, thanks Les. So you still have people on the phone. If you are on the phone and you'd like to make a comment, all you do is hit star nine. at star nine on your phone and that raises your hand and we'll call you by your phone number because we don't see your name. Okay, Les, so um, now I'm looking at the people who got their hand raised and the first person, and by the way, I'll let you guys know, we've still got about 57 people in attendance right now. Um, so the first person I got up is uh, Michael Lentz. So Michael Lentz, you are um, you can unmute yourself and remember to restate your name and any organization you're with. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Hello, Michael Lentz. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, you're very faint though, so you're gonna have to speak up or you might have to change your microphone. Okay, is this better? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, my name is Michael Lentz. I'm a concerned uh, citizen. Um, I'd just like to uh, bring the fact that um, Embridge is going to allow for 5 million gallons of wastewater daily. Um, that just can't happen in the Great Lakes where it's um, 
the most fresh water in the world. Um, we've seen the impacts that it, um, contamination has had on Flint and that has had on other pipelines that have burst and the Great Lakes is not a place that um, a pipeline should be located. Um, talking about virtually um, virtually no cause of spills, but um, there's a lot of other places that it could happen. Um, I think Enbridge is just looking out for our own profits and not worried about the cost of citizens that live in this er these areas. So um, I would like to um, advocate for declining the permit. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next person with their hand raised is Lisa Patrell. Lisa Patrell. You're unmuted, so you can go ahead. Thank you. Um, I want to note that the uh, retention ponds are retention ponds and not detention ponds that will be holding some of the 5 million gallons of waste. The design of a of a retention pond is to temporarily hold the water and in Eagle's own pre presentation um, of September 8th, they talked about how the uh, uh, liquids would then sink back into the groundwater, but that's not just Lake Michigan water, that's the chemicals and other things that have been added to the water going into the groundwater. There has been no study done about how that could affect um, residential drinking wells, much less the wetlands that are in the area. Also lacking in the plan is um, reference to, um, of, uh, there's no mitigation plan in the event that these retention ponds that are located uh, on the shores of Lake Michigan, should they fail. Um, there's no, uh, uh, mentioned that it's going to be equipment on site uh, to, 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 to surround the liquid much like you would in an oil spill. There is also lacking in the permit between ACE and Eagle, they're going to study four um, species, a gray wolf, a long-eared bat, the Houghton Gold goldenrod, and an iris. And it seems to me that these four species were specifically picked and avoiding any aquatic species um, so as to have a good outcome. This is a tunnel project that has dangers of having accidents while it's being made. There's dangers of the retention pond leakage or, or uh, line five itself being um, damaged during the tunneling process. There should be studies on aquatic species, our fish, our native mollusk, the um, waterfowl that eat the fish, the migrating birds, um, and uh, the plant life that supports the whole ecosystem. So in addition to the other points that people have made up that haven't been studied, the geology, the chemicals, um, uh, that we need to have an environmental impact statement that includes um, a more reasonable inclusion of species that would be affected. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next person with their hand up is Emily Baker. Emily Baker. Um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, go Hello, ahead. I hope it's, I hope this isn't too warped this time. I, I guess I want to repeat what I said before. I did send in an email comment. Again, I, again, I hope that, that the ones who weren't able to show, especially me, Jim Olson and Mike, Mike Walsinski. I hope they, they do get a chance to come. I'm sure they must have had a good reason for not showing up. I hope they're okay. And, and anyway, along with what I had said before and what that basically everybody else here has said, I suppose I should have added the bit about the potential hazards as at the last hearing, in, including what had the proximity of an electrical spark, not just to exterior methane pockets, but 
the gas and oil all being transported through the tunnel alongside it. And, and again, I want to repeat hey, what I said about considering possible invasive species vectors in the vehicles and equipment and in the reseeding packages that they're planning on using post-construction along with everything else. And, and whether, the, whether the motion is carried through or not, must insist on transparency in, in the uh, practices they intend. It was suggested in some presentations I had viewed earlier from the aforementioned ex experts that the head Enbridge was cutting corners on their plan and drilling through other substrate besides bedrock. So, oh, I'm going to insist on that, whatever happens. And I suppose that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, just want to remind people that uh, if you would like to make a comment today, just click the raise hand icon on your Zoom toolbar and we'll call on you. Also, um, if you're on the phone and you'd like to make a comment, hit the star nine button and we'll raise your hand and we'll call on you that way. Okay, next person with their hand up is Jim Olson. Jim Olson, we have um, no, I'm your line. Go, you, we can hear you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Haas and uh, Eagle Staff. Um, I'm representing Flow uh, for Love of Water this afternoon. Uh, the purpose of this comment today is to just provide you with an over, overview here. Flow intends to file detailed written comments uh, before the deadline. But I want to address two things. One, um, <clears throat> uh, because three minutes is short, I have put into the Q&A certain comments regarding the application of Part 325 to the DNR easement and the assignment of that easement uh, uh, to uh, uh, Enbridge. Uh, those are grants of uh, property or conveyance interests in the bottomlands of Great Lakes. Uh, and as Flo and others have uh, submitted legal analyses for years now, uh, those have not been authorized under the Submerged Lands Act, nor have they been authorized with the public trust finding requirements under Section 2129 of Part 21 for utility easements. We consider this, in addition to the other comments that will be addressed by us later, as I mentioned, we consider this to be a threshold question, along with the application of the Environmental Protection Act, which requires a very comprehensive analysis of both alternatives and impact, impacts and findings of those under 1705 Prem 2 of MEPA in the Vanderclute case, Michigan Supreme Court, 1974. Um, Flo submitted a, a comment on this application almost after it was filed when we were notified requesting preliminary rulings before we proceed. We asked that those comments previously filed and incorporated here today be addressed. Uh, specifically, we're asking for a ruling that the Submerged Lands Act applies to the easements and the assignment and the 99 year lease uh, in that section 21, 29 in the public trust findings apply. And until those have been obtained by Enbridge, this application is premature, administratively incomplete, and in any event, the construction permit. One minute. In the, uh, thank you. Uh, the construction permit sections uh, are separate from the ones I'm addressing, which are 32502 through 32505. And we expect that that will be ruled on and determined before this matter is proceeds and at the very least before any decisions are made on the construction permit, because without that, the construction permit is moot and meaningless. Uh, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, I'm looking at my attendee board and I do not see any other hands raised at this time. So I'll just give it a few more seconds to let people, if they wanna make a comment, to go ahead and, and raise your hand. Again, if you're on the phone, you can hit star nine and that'll allow you to raise your hand um, while we're waiting for people if you wanna decide. I um, just wanna remind you 
that, uh, let me share my screen again here, all the ways to submit comment up on the screen. Um, if you decide later you want to make a comment or something more extensive than what you could make today, uh, you can send it in my waters uh, to the, the, you probably won't want to write this <laughs> URL down, but in the chat box, there is a direct link. So if you look in the chat box on your Zoom uh, toolbar, you can click right on that. It takes you right into the comment area where you can make your comments. Um, you can also email them in. And for those on the phone that want to hear the email address, it's eagle, E-G-L-E dash Enbridge, E-N-B-R-I-D-G-E dash comments at michigan.gov. So eagle dash Enbridge dash comments at michigan.gov. That's how you can email your comments in. Okay, not seeing any other hands raised. Uh, what I'm going to do then is read off our closing statement and after that I'll give a, our staff a chance to make any closing comments that they might want to make. All right, so um, as a reminder, oops, let me adjust my screen here. There we go. Uh, as a reminder, the department will hold a second public hearing on this Enbridge Energy Joint Permit application or resource wetlands application on October 8th at six o'clock p.m. If you did not make comments today or wish to make additional comments, you may do so at that time. Also, the public comment period for accepting written comments is open until October 19th, 2020. We will consider all comments received prior to making a final decision. Written comments may be submitted online in our MyWaters database. And directions can be found in the documents you can access in the webinar. So just sent that out in chat, like I said. Comments can also be submitted to the following address. Water Resources Division, Eagle, 2100 West M32, Gaylord, Michigan, 49735-9282. Or you can email to Eagle, E-G-L-E, dash Enbridge, E-N-B-R-I-D-G-E, dash comments. C-O-M-M-E-N-T-S at michigan.gov. Thank you for your comments and cooperation. We appreciate your interest and that you took time today to be here. The public hearing is now closed and thank you again. So I wanna thank everybody for their comments today. And I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa or Lu Louise. Teresa, do you have any comments or wrap up? No, just thank you for attending today, and I hope that you'll attend the next two, and if you have additional comments, uh, use the MyWaters link, if possible, so that we can get them directly into the system. It sure does make it easier for everyone, um, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Okay, thanks. Uh, Louise, did you have any? Uh, just simply, I wanted to thank everyone for taking time to be here with us today, and uh, uh, we appreciate the comments and thoughtful um, suggestions and uh, concerns and we'll take those into account as we continue to review the project. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks everybody. Like I said, we are recording. We did record this and we'll post it on the Line 5 website so you can access it if you'd like to listen to it. Um, it'll be there uh, probably not for the next uh, day or two, uh, but it will be there. Um, also the next public hearing for this application, like we said, October 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. And you can find information on that at michigan.gov slash line 5. So thanks to the staff that are here listening in and also thank you to all of you who who tuned in and made comments or just listened. Thank you all and have a great day.